Dear students, this presentation is a video lesson on Unit 4.3 of your Standard 12 Yog Bharti English book of Maharashtra Board. It is on Around the World in 80 Days from pages 191 to 200. The last four chapters of that original novel, a globe-trotting adventure novel written by the playwright Jules Gabriel Verne, originally written in French, titled La Tour de Mon or Quatre Vents Shores. He has been the second most translated author in the world since 1979, after Agatha Christie and before the legendary playwright William Shakespeare. His novels are based on voyages, adventures and travelogues. Verne was born on 8th of February 1828 on island Fedu, on the Loire River in the town of Nantes. Right since age 6, he had been greatly admired by thematic stories like Robinson Crusoe, which had been narrated to him by his teacher, Madame Simbin, in the city Nantes. He had a deep fascination with geography, merchant ships, navigation, game of goose, etc. He was deeply influenced by the novelists and dramatists like Victor Hugo and Alexander Dumas. In the initial stages of his career, he started writing adventure stories for magazines. Though he faced many ultimatums from his father to become a lawyer, and he gained the law degree too. He remained firm to pursue his literary career and had said, Am I not right to follow my own instincts? It is because I know who I am that I realize what I can be one day. He believed everything which had a strong reason for its existence and never believed much in gospels or super or supernatural powers. And yes, he traveled a lot. That is why. He gained honor of being called as father of science fiction alongside H.G. Wells and Hugo Gernsback. His collaboration with the publisher Pierre Jules Hedsel led to the creation of Voyages Extraordinaries, having a collection of 54 novels, starting with Five Weeks in a Balloon, all adventure stories which were published between 1863 and 1905. I mean, a series of best-selling adventure novels, including Journey to the Center of the Earth in the year 1864, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in the year 1870, and Around the World in 80 Days in the year 1872. On 24th of March 1905, as had been ill with diabetes, he breathed his last at his home in Amiens, France. In the year 1989, Verne's great-grandson discovered his great-grandfather's yet unpublished novel, Paris in the 20th Century, which was subsequently published in the year 1994. Now, let us focus on this drama, one of the most read and loved adventure novel, which is Around the World in 80 Days, running through 37 chapters. In fact, you are supposed to read the last four chapters. I mean the chapters from 34 to 37, which are given in the book. Now, let us get a clear picture of the entire novel to grasp the last chapters in a better way. Let us start from chapter number 1. So, here I go. Phileas Fogg is the circumnavigator and the main character. Pasapatu is his loyal employee. Around the world, monsieur. Mr. Fix is a detective after Mr. Fogg and Mrs. Fogg is a widow from India. These are the four main characters and the central character is the circumnavigator Phileas Fogg. The storyline in Around the World in 80 Days revolves around the fact that the world has advanced in transportation due to technology, especially trains and steamships after industrial revolution. It also refers to the number of days in which the main character, I mean Phileas Fogg, believes can traverse the globe with London as his start and end point. So dear students, the elements which attract our attention are money, wit and determination to win a bet also give smooth way to symbols like clocks, circles, maps, ships, machines, trains, sledge, even elephant as means of transport and above all about time and space. Oh yes, also a brief titillating love story. Mm. He proved that time could be conquered. 
the novel is also apt to understand the cultural diversity sights and sounds of various continents as is shown while circumnavigation it is like a documentary about the colonial world beyond europe in the 19th century read it once again as a travelog if you have already read it once as a science fiction phileas fogg despite his wealth lives a modest life with habits carried out with mathematical precision you may call him a perfectionist very little can be said about his social life other than that he is a member of reform club in london where he spends much of his days one day in the club he was reading an article in the daily telegraph stating that with the opening of a new railway section in india it is now possible to travel around the world in 80 days actually jules verne had kept three things in his mind while writing this novel or play i say it a play because right from its stage version since 1874 It has been filmed in the year 1956, winning Academy Award for the Best Picture. Then, in its masterful retelling, which was aired as miniseries on television in the year 1989, it became an all-time hit in domestic circles. And I have borrowed a few scenes from that miniseries around the world in 80 days by Pierce Brosnan, an Irish-American actor, serial and film producer. Then, in the year 2004. the movie starring Jackie Chan, Steve Coogan and Cecil de France hitting silver screen and has been ruling in several film industries translated serialized redesigned podcasted through radio still receiving high acclaim coming back to his storyline idea Jules Verne had kept three gifts of technology in his mind first was the opening of Suez Canal in Egypt in the year 1869 connecting Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea a more direct route between the North Atlantic and Northern Indian Ocean the second was the expansion of rail network and powerful steamboats within the countries and the third was the subtle manipulation he did in mathematics sometimes hiding it with geography and sometimes bribing people at various countries as his target was to reach London within 80 days the entire story is about a bet which Mr Fogg himself had kept to counter his reform club friends and that was he would lose 20000 pounds today dear students if you calculate the amount it comes to 23 lakh pounds his last fortune with him 20000 pounds at Baring's bank and i'm quite willing to risk the entire the then 20000 pounds <laughs> if he fails circumnavigating the world within 80 days or on his winning the deal he would get it from his five friends who accepted the challenge in the club that of course once again mr fog he would lose 20000 pounds if he fails to circumnavigate the world within 80 days or if he wins his five friends would pay him 20000 pounds the deal was struck now we come to the chapter wise summary the first two chapters show us phileas fog the employer and Jia Pasapatu his servant at Mr Fogg's residence in upscale London colony the personalities complement each other fogg is a time bound perfectionist whose actions make him seem like a clock wrapped in human cover perfectly timed and calibrated an emotionless automation he is a cool headed englishman he is reserved but not shy he does not interact much his mindset and social situations interact with other people when they fit into his preset time frame i hope you understand but later we find him very kind and generous i mean he spends his kindness and emotions only when they are directly needed in a society now on the other hand his assistant pasapatu loves meeting new people he is very emotional and does not learn to hide his emotional strings hi he is excited to be a part of fog's life where every detail is logical and lucid now it is from the third chapter that the story really begins during their daily card game phileas fog and his five reform club associates discuss a recent robbery at the bank of england by a thief who has escaped with 55000 pounds andrew stuart one of the card game players argues that a robber would get away with the crime because the world is a big place and detectives cannot find him another player 
got here ralph expects detectives will catch the robber quickly whereas phileas fogg says to stuart that the world used to be a big place but this is not true anymore huh? uh, did you say something Bob? it was once can we play gentlemen once it was once mr fogg explains to them how he said people can now circumnavigate the world in just 80 days because of the completion of a new railway spanning india another player john sullivan shows them a timetable published in morning chronicle newspaper which shows exactly how the trip can be accomplished traveling by rail and steamship from london to india to hong kong and then to japan san francisco new york and back to london taking a longer period to return his friends Lots argue that he must also Storms consider unforeseen circumstances if they arise during the round trip fox states his 80 day itinerary has precision planning stuart then makes a 4000 pound wager or we may say a bet challenging Impossible. that fox cannot 80. accomplish such a feat but fox is confident and counters with 20000 pounds his entire fortune to wager he counters them with his belief in planning and his implicit better. trust Gentlemen, in the technological really advances around the world Now, highlighting the new trans india railway and that the world has actually become smaller the five possible. card players andrew stewart like john sullivan samuel fallington thomas flanagan and gotter ralph except fox 20000 pound bet Trust in his propensity for detail. Fogg asserts that he will circumnavigate the wall beginning at 8:45 p.m. That was on October 2nd, 1872, a Wednesday, and ending at 8:45 p.m. on December 21st, 1872, a Saturday, in the same Reform Club. I repeat, he would circumnavigate the wall beginning at 8:45 p.m. That was on October 2nd, 1872, a Wednesday, and. ending at 8:45 p.m. on December 21st, 1872, a Saturday in the same reform club. I mean within or Here equal to 80 days, not a minute more. Then in chapter 4, Phileas leaves with Pasapatu on a train bound for Paris. In the train, Pasapatu remembers that he did not put off the gas. So it would glow for at least 80 days or more or less. so it would glow at least for 80 days from then so dear students here i would like you to be aware of the route mr fog had planned from london to swiss in ship i mean swiss canal which is the northeast corner of africa and southwest corner of asia it is a border and an easy route to asia so from swiss to bombay easily in a steamship from bombay to calcutta in train and elephant from calcutta to hong kong from hong kong to shanghai and from there to yokohama japan from yokohama to san francisco in steamships from san francisco to new york city and from new york city to london using mm, 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 so many means of transport all in 80 days using steamships trains elephants horse carriages hand cart wind powered sledge walking running and of course all with mr fogg's wit and grit now coming back to the story in chapter 5 while phileas fogg and pasapatu travel the members of the reform club are excited about fogg's challenge soon all of london's foremost club members hold debates arguing the sanity or foolishness of fogg's bet of 20000 pounds men on both sides of the argument enthusiastically place bets on his chances of winning but unfortunately the betting fever evaporates I had mentioned about a robbery at the Bank of England by a thief who has escaped with 55000 pounds his features resembled Mr Fogg or was he Mr Fogg himself one detective Mr Fix of the Metropolitan Police sends a telegram identifying Phileas Fogg as the Bank of England robber Phileas Fogg's sudden trip is then considered to be an expertly planned scheme to avoid capture and arrest Let me remind you dear students the scenes in the background or in the main timeline of this video have been borrowed from the 1989 mini series around the world in 80 days by Piers Brosnan it is not for any commercial purpose it is for you to understand the story in an easier and more interesting way right now through chapter 6 we learn that detective fix 
was waiting for the ship on the dock in the Swiss, waiting for the steamship Mongolia to arrive, assuming furious fog is on the steamer. Fix is convinced that Felius Fogg is that bank robber who is using the bet as a means of escape. In chapter 7, not much, just he got his passport stamped, I mean Felius Fogg in British Consul on the Swiss dock. Mr. Fix was highly infected of £2,000 reward and an additional reward of 5% for bringing the money back to the bank. So he too boarded the ship Mongolia and followed the duo. I mean Phileas Fogg and Pasapatu. In chapter 8, we find Mr. Fix befriends Pasapatu to get more details of Mr. Fogg. The Mongolia arrives in Bombay, that is India, on October 20th, two days ahead of Fogg's schedule. This is detailed in chapter number 9. Now, in chapter number 10, we come to know Phileas Fogg gives Pasapatu a list of things to buy in Bombay and reminds him to be on train by 8 that evening. While completing his work early, Pasapatu chooses to spend the brief time he has in Bombay and that was sightseeing. Not realizing tourists are forbidden in Hindu temples, he not only enters one but also disobeys a sacred law by wearing his shoes. Three priests attack him. Somehow Pasapatu breaks away but leaves his packages and shoes there. He boards the train at the last minute, Mr. Fogg was very angry and yes, the detective Mr. Fix boarded the same train. He must follow the culprit till arrest warrants arrive from London. Now in chapter 11, we are told that the train en route Calcutta stopped midway due to the unfinished track and the travellers were instructed to find their own transportation to catch up with a different train at Allahabad and from Allahabad they could go to Calcutta. It could have been a trip ending disaster but Fogg buys an elephant and a mahout to reach Allahabad and from there they could catch a train to Calcutta. They were still two days ahead of their plan. Then in chapter 12 and chapter 13, we find something very interesting. While on elephant's back, Mr. Fogg could see Brahmin priests and scholars followed by a procession passing by. They could also see a woman surrounded by heavily armed guards. In the center of the parade, they carry a platform with a corpse, I mean dead body, of a Raja laid upon it. The Mahout explains that the woman, who was the queen named Oda, is now a Sati, the widow of the dead Raja, who was quite older than the princess before their marriage and she was forced to marry that old king. Oda would be burned alive with her husband the next morning. While at other instances, my dear students, Mr. Fogg seems to take issue with the colonial mindset. Here, he clearly sees Oda's rescue as a matter of justice. Instantly, Mr. Woman. Fogg suggests, Monsieur, we must save the woman. So, in chapter 13, which is a comedy, you will come to know how Mr. Fogg had made a plan with the help of that Mahout to rescue the Parsi queen Oda from performing Sati. In the morning, Pasapatu jumps into the funeral pyre just as the priests light the blaze where he rises in the smoke and flames. The crowd thinks the Raja has come back to life. So they bow out of respect. Pasapatu, Miss Oda, Fog and the elephant driver flee through the forest. But through this chapter, we understand that Mr. Fogg had a very big heart and his self-sacrifice quality and the cost of loss of one full day shows that he loved humanity and believed in vitality of human life. Oda surprised Mr. Fogg as she was not only a beautiful queen but also well versed in English and knew martial arts, archery, horse riding and what not. Mr. Fogg came to know about all that in due course of time. Now, continuing with the story. All of them board a train from Allahabad to Calcutta through chapters 14 and 15 and reaching Calcutta. So, in chapter 16 and in chapter 17, during their voyage from Calcutta to Hong Kong in the steamship Rangoon, as per the schedule which I gave you earlier, dear students, Phileas Fogg and Mrs. Oda are in constant conversation. She talks and he listens, always attentive but uninvolved. Who? 
Mr. Fogg. Passapattu also notices Mrs. Oda's romantic feelings for Mr. Fogg and cannot understand his employer's blindness to them. As usual, Mr. Fix was following them in the steamship. Though they experienced sea turbulence, they reached Hong Kong from where they had to board on the steamship Carnatic to reach Yokohama, Japan. Mr. Fix also would join. No surprises. This time, Pasapatu was convinced that Mr. Fix was following them and believed by heart that he must be a spy sent by the Reforms Club friends to ensure whether Mr. Fogg actually has performed the journey in 80 days. Hmm. But Mr. Fix and Pasapatu had befriended themselves to the extent that Mr. Fix revealed his true identity to Pasapatu and also the reason of following them. Pasapatu could not believe that. But Mr. Fix made Pasapatu over drunk in an opium den at Hong Kong and threw him there on his own fate. Hence, Pasapatu could not convey the message to his master that the ship would be leaving that evening and not the next morning. Mr. Fix was very greedy and cruel. He ensured that Mr. Fogg could not board the ship that evening, I mean the previous evening, on time, as he waited for Pasapatu. And he succeeded in his plan. Who? Mr. Fix. But Mr. Fogg, along with Mrs. Order, boarded another ship tanker deer for Shanghai the next morning. As from Shanghai, he could get options to get a ship towards Yokohama, Japan. Mr. Fix too followed them. This is written in chapter number 21. Now, in chapter number 22. Meanwhile, Pasapatu comes out of his drunken sleep from the Hong Kong opium den with just enough energy to reach the port and the deck of the next day Carnatic. He discovers Phileas Fogg and Mrs. Order are not in passenger list. He then realizes they missed the previous day ship because he never informed them of their departure time. He is devastated for likely causing Fogg to lose the pet. But he boards the Carnatic steamship and reaches Yokohama. In chapter 23, we see Pasapatu reaching the port in Yokohama, Japan penniless. He has no money to eat, so he sells his clothes to buy some food. He acts as an acrobatic clown for some time to earn money. But what a wonderful coincidence! Pasapatu's acrobatic performance there in Yokohama is to help from the bottom to stand a four-tired human pyramid and he has to attach a long bamboo nose to his face. While he was performing the stunt, he saw Phileas Fogg and Mrs. Orda in the audience. Oh my God! Immediately, immediately, he abandoned his spot, destroying the human pyramid and ran towards his master. Just watch this clip. Master happily and journeyed ahead. Through chapter 24, as Phileas Fogg, Mrs. Order, and Pasapatu travel through the Pacific Ocean on the steamship named General Grant, Mrs. Order explains to Pasapatu how they made it to Yokohama. She tells Pasapatu about somebody who became their friend, about hiring another steamship after missing the Carnatic, and about meeting up with a Yokohama bound steamship in Shanghai. She mentioned they had travelled with an Englishman named Fix, who has also missed the Carnatic. At the mention of Fix's name, Pasapatu shows no emotion because he doesn't want to explain his association with that ugly policeman. Fix is also on the same ship, but he is hiding from Pasapatu, 
who will certainly tell Fogg that Fix is a detective if he is discovered. He has the warrant for Phileas Fogg's arrest, but it is invalid now that they are on their way to America. He plans to stick close to Phileas Fogg and arrest him when he steps foot back on English soil. When Passapatu and Fix accidentally meet each other at the fore of the ship, Passapatu gives Fix a severe beating. Afterwards, Fix promises not to create any more obstacles for Fogg, but warns Passapatu that he will find out if Fogg is a criminal or an honest man once they are back in England. Passapatu agrees to respect the policeman's authority, but he refuses to call him a friend. The ship arrives in San Francisco on December 3rd. Mr. Fogg has 18 days to reach London. Chapters from 25 to 31 serve as a brief interlude as from San Francisco they would be heading to New York in a train spanning a 10-day duration from December 3 to December 12. The unfortunate part was that they could have reached New York on the 9th of December. They had already overspent three days. The story in these chapters show us that Pasapatu is lost once again and then found. They slide over snow on sledge and face all obstacles to reach London on time or behind time or beyond time we will come to know. Chapter 32 is the 71st day of his journey with only 9 days, 13 hours and 45 minutes remaining. Chapter 32 A big problem. Mr. Fogg cannot find an ocean liner fast enough to get them from New York City to Liverpool, England. Within the bet's time frame, it was just impossible. He changes his plans. He sees a steamship Henrietta. Its captain was Mr. Speedy. Mr. Fogg offers Captain Speedy $2,000 per person, a total of $8,000 for traveling fast to Bordeaux, France. But Mr. Fogg must have given money only for the three. Now who is the fourth one? The three persons are Mr. Fogg himself, Mrs. Oda and Passapatu. Now who is the fourth person? The fourth person is that shameless Mr. Fix. He is travelling shamelessly on Mr. Fogg's money and pretending to be very gentlemanly. Mr. Fogg offered $8,000 to Captain Speedy to take his three companions and himself to Bordeaux in France. The man accepts the deal. As for Mr. Fogg, a man who personifies perseverance, it is highly unlikely he has lost his resolve to win, though he has spent already as much as the bet amount. The bet is not over until 8.45 pm on December 21st and the Henrietta leaves the dock at 9 on December 13th. So Mr. Fogg still has time to beat the clock. Before I enlighten you about chapter 33, let me remind you that I had mentioned about Mr. Fogg's subtle manipulation earlier that is sometimes hiding mathematics with geography and sometimes bribing people at various countries because his target had always been focused on reaching London within 80 days. In this chapter, we find how he bribed some people to accomplish his target. Yes, he did that. Mr. Fogg wanted that Captain Speedy must change the course of the ship to Liverpool and not Bodo. But the captain won't change his course from Bodo to Liverpool. So Mr. Fogg bribes the entire crew to get to his desired port on time. He locks Speedy in his quarters and himself becomes captain of the ship, Captain Fogg. But a storm hit them in the middle. He did not lose hope and speed. Speed had used up most of their coal supply. You cannot imagine, dear students, what Mr. Fogg did next. He bought that ship Henrietta from Captain Speedy for $60,000, only to strip the ship of wood to keep the furnace blasting. They land in Ireland, take a train to Dublin so that they could reach England on time. At 11.40 am on December 21st, they disembark in Liverpool, been there, done that, but unfortunately, as soon as Phileas Fogg steps on British soil, Fogg. Yes, that is Mr. Phileas Fogg. Yes, what is it, Mr. Fix? We are once again on British soil, sir. 
We are indeed, sir. I arrest you in the name of the law. I beg your pardon? No, it is incumbent on me to hand you this warrant. No. Robbery? Bank of England? I am a detective, sir. Good heavens. Always have been. Just a detective trying to do his duty. And now, sir, if you'll accompany me to the customs house, you'll be held there in custody until such a time as you are transferred to London. No, you cannot. Fix arrest Mr. Fogg for that bank robbery. Now, Felix Fogg is in prison in Liverpool, just nine and a quarter hours away from deadline, only a six-hour drive from Liverpool to the Forms Club London before his deadline. Passapatu blames himself for not exposing Fix's identity earlier, which would have given Fogg some time to prove his innocence. Mrs. Order refuses to believe Fogg as a thief. The eternally impassive Felix Fogg sits in his cell, staring at the time passing on his watch. Now the last four chapters which are there in your Yog Bharti course book can be read to connect with the rest of the drama. Before I give you the summary of the last four chapters from 34 to 37, I must show you the globe so that you recall the concept of international date line. So dear students, a longitude line or a meridian is any line that runs vertically that is from the North Pole to the South Pole. There are 24 meridians as there are 24 hours in a day. Each longitude is 15 degree wide. 1 5, 15 degree wide. Each degree is equal to 4 minutes. The earth turns 15 degree longitude per hour. So 15 multiplied by 4 is 60 minutes. There must be one mean meridian or a standard or a prime meridian. So where is it? It is in Greenwich. Greenwich is that location of zero degree held meridian in southeast London, England, which is the mean solar time at the Royal Observatory. It is held as zero degree longitude on a globe or a map. First, I show you the globe. There are 24 time zones, 12 on the east and 12 on the west, marked as longitudes. 24 longitudes each with a spanning distance of 15 degrees or 60 minutes, as I said, hence. 24 zones multiplied with 15 degrees multiplied by 4 minutes is equal to 1440 minutes is equal to 24 hours, right? The globe is 360 degree and there is one line exactly opposite of the GMT. We call it international date line, an imaginary line which passes through the Pacific Ocean. It is exactly the 180th degree meridian from the zero degree which is the prime meridian. You can reach ideal about 180 degree east or west of Greenwich. But the whole confusion is time. Either plus or minus. When you cross the international date line from west to east, you subtract a day. And if you cross the line from east to west, you add a day. How? I show you the same thing through a world map. See this GMT. A solid line at zero degree exactly at the center of the map. Right? All on the east side of this line are ahead of GMT and those on the west are behind GMT. I mean the east is always positive and west is always negative. I also mean that if somebody travels from west to east, he has lost certain hours which he can gain only after he comes back to the west. Time is gained to the extent of 24 hours. I also mean that the same date may be repeated at the destination. Or in simple words, the date is decreased by 1. Whereas, if I travel from east to west, a day is lost at the destination. I mean a date is added by 1. There is no surprise that one country has more than one time zones. France has 12 time zones. Russia and the USA have 11 time zones. Australia and the UK have 9. Pakistan has only one that is GMT plus 5 hours. Further east that is India also has one that is GMT plus 5 and a half hours. Further east China 
has one which is GMT plus eight, Japan GMT plus nine. Now, Phileas Fogg traveled towards east from London to Egypt. I'm in Swiss. GMT plus two hours from Swiss to Bombay, then to Calcutta. GMT plus five and a half hours from there to China. GMT plus eight hours from China to Japan. GMT plus nine hours and then from Japan to the USA and from New York to London. The rest will be told to you only in the climax, my dear children. So, coming back to the nearly ending scene of chapter thirty-three, where I had left to teach you ideal, I mean international date line. Phileas Fogg is sitting in his cell, staring at the time, passing on his watch. He is in the prison now. Chapter thirty-four in the prison. Time was ticking past. It was only at two thirty-three p.m. Justice reached him in a gold platter. The prison door swung open. Fix Pasapatu and Mrs. Order rushed towards Fogg's jail cell door, and moments later, Fogg is freed. Fix explained to Mr. Fogg that the real thief, James Strand, has been arrested three days earlier. That is on seventeenth of December in Edinburgh, Scotland, and that the robber had an unfortunate resemblance with Mr. Fogg, and ultimately that. Fix then asked forgiveness from Fogg. Once released, Fogg, using both of his fists, punches Fix in the face and then hires a special train. He hires a special train. I reiterate, he hires a special train to speed him to London, as there was no super fast train available at 2:40 p.m. Right. How dare you! How dare you put your face in front of us, sir? Whatever you may be thinking, I am a man of honour and a true professional. They arrive at station at 8:50 p.m. on December 21st. Five minutes past the deadline. Oh, he was supposed to reach the club at 8:45 p.m. He reached the station at 8:50 p.m. Chapter 36 is all sorrow partially converted to happiness. How? Let me tell you. The day after Phileas Fogg, Mrs. Oda, and Pasapatu returned to Mr. Fogg's home on 21st of December at Savile Row. The house looks uninhabited. Mr. Fogg settles Mrs. Oda into her room and retreats to his own room to sort out his finances. He asks his servant Pasapatu to prepare lunch and dinner for Mrs. Oda, and to tell her that he would talk with her that evening. Pasapatu turns off the gas he accidentally left running for the last eighty days, keeps an ear on his employer's room in case he needs him, or the worst, he commits suicide, and sits with Mrs. Oda, who tells him she loves Mr. Fogg. That evening. When Fogg visits her, she proposes to him. Fogg simply says, "I love you, I love you, and I'm wholly yours." And sends Pasapatu to schedule the Malibun priest to marry them the next day. That is on Monday, the twenty-third of December. Monday, the twenty-third of December, the servant rushes out of the house to do his employer's bidding at eight five p.m. Chapter thirty-six. Starting from page one ninety six of our Yog Bharati book is extreme thrill to read. If I summarize it, you may miss the cherry on the cake. I request you to read it at least once. To read about Phileas Fogg bonds and bets, about how the huge crowd could not keep its eyes off that big clock while waiting for Mr. Fogg at Pall Mall, Central London, about the last minute pendulum beat. About a complete silence, stillness, suspense, and numbness, and ultimately about three seconds to eight forty-five p.m. when Phileas Fogg enters the club, confidently and respectfully, clearing his way, calm and composed, and also leaving his opponents knocked out. The last chapter, which is chapter thirty-seven, is about breaking and reviewing a suspense, the most valuable chapter upon which the entire novel is placed. I request you all to read the verbatim given by Jules Verne in his book, or printed in Yogabharati from page one ninety eight. 
at the parish priest's residence, let me rewind the story to chapter 35, I had said that Mr. Fogg sent Pasapatu to schedule the Marylebone priest for Mr. Mr. Fogg and Mrs. Horner's marriage on 22nd of December at 8.5 p.m. Right? Uh, the next day. That is on Monday. When he reached Reverend Samuel Wilson see, to book the marriage date, tomorrow, uh, he will have to wait until Monday. Uh, but, but tomorrow is Monday. No, no, you're mixed up, I'm afraid. Today is Saturday, and therefore tomorrow is most definitely Sunday. Oh, no, 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 that cannot be. The Paris tells Pasapatu it is Saturday evening and not Sunday. That is, it was 21st of December and the time was 8.35 p.m. But how could that be? No, it cannot be. Since they travelled against the sun, they gained 4 minutes an hour as they crossed each longitude line. By the end of their eastward trip, they gained a full 24 hours. He learns that he is mistaken in the date. It is not 22nd December but instead 21st December. Because they had travelled eastward, their days were shortened by 4 minutes for each of the 360 degrees of longitude they crossed. 1 degree is equal to 4 minutes, so 360 degrees into 4 minutes is equal to 1440 minutes is equal to 24 hours. It means they gain one day. Thus, although they had experienced the same amount of time abroad as people had experienced in London, they had seen 80 sunrises and sunsets while London had seen only 79. So they had reached one day ahead of the deadline but there were only 10 minutes in hand to reach the reforms club. Pasapatu grabs Fogg and hurries him into the cab, explaining the time zone difference. Since they gained the day, Fogg is able to meet his deadline and win the major. Although he wins £20,000, he had £19,000 in expenses. He divides the balance £1,000 between Pasapatu and Fix, for whom he could feel no resentment, and marries Mrs. Order. Now, the story ends, the drama ends. Some interesting facts post-publication I would like to share. The novel gathered tremendous applause and readership. You will be surprised to know that Jules Verne was ahead of his time while writing this novel because Greenwich was not adopted internationally until 1884, whereas the novel was published in the year 1872 itself. The novel's enduring popularity even led to the creation of an entire theme park dedicated to Verne's description of world travel. The park Worlds of Fun in Kansas, Missouri describes itself as a traditional amusement park themed around Jules Verne's adventure book Around the World in 80 Days. The attraction features rides and games reminiscent of various locations that Fogg visits in the novel. Many ambitious travellers have viewed Around the World in 80 Days as a challenge since its publication in the year 1872. In the year 1888, Neely Bly, a reporter from the New York World newspaper, undertook the trip for a public interest story and managed to beat Fogg's time by a full eight days. In the year 1903, James Willis Sayer completed the journey in 54 days and 9 hours due in part of recent completion of the Trans-Siberian Railroad. In the year 2014, two friends created a project called Optimistic Traveller in which they circumnavigated the globe with the added challenge of not using money. The duo was able to complete the trip within Verne's original time frame. Many of the foreign destinations Fogg visits were actually British colonial possessions during the late 19th century, including Egypt, India and Hong Kong. The entire story takes a turn on international date line. Now that we have grasped the story, let us talk about a few themes of the drama. First is about logic versus emotion. Confidence of Phileas Fogg is like Mount Everest. Mr. Fogg's innermost reflections and personal feelings are never known to us as he is shown as a perfectionist, never compromising, calculative, discreet, enigmatic, etc. Readers witness that Mr. Fogg's methods which keep a precise log of the dates and times of departures and arrivals, maps, winning instinct, etc. have also constructed an inbuilt desire to love mankind. 
His machine-like precision has an operating system which is inbuilt in every human being, which thinks, empathizes and rescues friends when required. Mr. Fogg's exacting as well as adventurous traits reveal his control over every aspect of his life. He never says or does anything he has not already considered from every factual angle. He is a good person who feels sorry for accompanying Mrs. Oda to London as he had lost most of his fortune. He is a kind person because he could not tolerate to see an Indian dogma we call as Sati. He is generous because he never inched ahead without his naughty assistant Pasapatu. He is a good friend of his friends. He is witty because he proved it several times that he could conquer time. At the same time, as a normal person, who is down in dumps, he could not calculate the concept of ideal, I mean international date line. And when he did, he had just 10 minutes in hand. It was only and only for the honor and not the money as a wager amount that he appeared in the club to prove that he won the bet. He had lost 19,000 pounds, but he won love of Mrs. Oda and others. He won admiration of his own servant and the clumsiest person on the earth who was Mr. Fix. Mr. Fogg never demanded his expenses he committed on Mr. Fix during the journey, nor did he repent on spending lavishly on trains, elephant, ship, etc. He hired trains. He bribed the crew members to change the steamship's course. Oh my God, he bought the ship itself and so many things. His money did not burn holes. He himself burned his pockets. Just to reach on time, on time or before time, and just for honor's sake, to win the wager, just to prove a point that is the world is so beautiful with technology, he tried to defy time and won ultimately. Yes, a man is made of emotions and will to win. He too proved himself sometimes with his wit and grit and sometimes with temptations to some people to change the course of their routines. Each character had some doubt about Mr. Fogg's role in the entire play. But Mr. Fogg never doubted his own chances and belief. Because he was not for the money. He was for the challenge. To him, the end justifies the means. His actions and feelings are justified as for the circumstances. He is hence the hero of the play. The second theme is more beautiful one. It is about doubt. Although Pasapatu and Mrs. Oda have emotional faith in Phileas Fogg's attempt to win his wager, Doubt sometimes seeps into their minds and hearts. They worry about Fogg beating the odds and winning because unlike Phileas Fogg, they believe unforeseen circumstances have the power to frustrate his plans and cause him to lose. Andrew Stewart, the reform club member and instigator of the wager, also contends that a person cannot account for every eventuality in life regardless of logic, technological advances or British colonization Everything is not in our hands, we call it destiny. Throughout the novel, Pasapatu's carelessness causes delays in Fogg's timeline. Although he is more than able to make up for them by his heroism, Pasapatu also bemoans how he has caused Fogg's financial downfall with not just the wager money but also the remaining £20,000 used for expenses. Likewise, Mrs. Oda's emotions mirror Pasapatu in Calcutta when she believes Fogg and Pasapatu are arrested for saving her from the Sati. Actually, they were arrested because Pasapatu had entered a temple, Hindu temple in Mumbai. So there was a warrant for that. Instead of leaving her to her fate, she doubted. She doubts that she is worth the extra trouble and delay she causes. She doubts whether Mr. Fogg is the bank robber who has been arrested but in the end, she is assured of her worth by her marriage to Fogg. In each of these cases, their worries center on money, weakening their faith in Fogg and in the success of his wager. For his part, Fogg never doubted his chances because he was not in it. He was not for the money. He was for the challenge. To him, the end justified the means. And then the third theme is about self-sacrifice. The main characters are willing to sacrifice their lives to save each other. Although Mrs. Oda is not voluntarily sacrificing herself to the Sati tradition, she voluntarily offers to remain in India when she believes Phileas Fogg and Pasipatu are arrested for rescuing her in Calcutta. Actually, it was not. She would forfeit her happiness, independence and even her life so that 
Falk could win the wager. Without being asked, Passapattu walks through fire to save Mrs. Oda, bemoans at Mr. Fogg's situation in the climax and played a very crucial role for Mr. Fogg's success story. For his part, Phyllis Fogg jeopardizes his life to save Mrs. Oda, to avenge his honor in a duel and to rescue Passapattu from an abduction, having been characterized from the beginning as self-absorbed perfectionist. Mr. Fogg's heroism may seem surprising, but it is clear that honor and justice can motivate even the most stoic characters. Thanks to one and all for watching this video. Like it if you loved watching it. Thanks once again.